I'm on your magical mystery ride And I'm so dizzy Don't know what it be But I'll be alright There we go My hands under water But I'm breathing fire Let's go y'all, come on What's up, Opal? Good evening, everybody. We're here for the Dr. Sims Daily Show on Tuesday evening at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're getting ready uh, for Intimacy Bay to come on. We talked a lot last week about the power of intimacy, part one. And this is part two tonight. And uh, we're going to have a great show. And I hope everybody uh, is... Uh, uh, got their notebooks out. Um, I hope everybody is ready to talk about intimacy. And, and there are so many layers to it. Um, you know, everybody, you know, that loves somebody, you want to end up, you know, having sexy time, as we say on TikTok, but, or YouTube for that matter. But it's so much that goes into building intimacy. Uh, hey, Freddie, uh, and then tomorrow night, we're going to talk about how to talk to a man, but that's at the Blue Table Talk for Men. But tonight we're talking about intimacy, and one thing, I'm a romantic. I love love, um, and love is a great thing. Love is a powerful thing, and if you have been in love and not in love anymore, I hope you're not bitter by it because I learned uh, a poem in the 10th grade in high school, and that's a long time ago. And the poem, I believe Lord Alfred Tennyson said it, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And um, when you can get beyond the fear, you get beyond the not wanting to be vulnerable. If you get when you get to that stage where you are in love with someone, and I was talking to one of my students Thursday, and she said, "Well, she loved her." Uh, significant other of seven years, but she's not in love with him anymore. I said, what does that even mean? She said, <laughs> she said, there used to be a time I would, I would die for this brother. But now, well, if he's alive or not, it's, it's, it's all good. But they are still in a situation ship, if you will. But love got so many variables. Uh, again, again, good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Sam, host of the Dr. Sam Daily Show. Uh, we're waiting on our special guest tonight. Uh, she's she's on quite a bit. Intimacy Bay is her TikTok handle. Her name is Sharita, and she has a wealth. Hey, Chi, she has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to uh, our sexy time, when it comes to the male body, the female body, the... Um, the do's and don'ts about diet uh, that impacts that impacts our sexy time, you know. And she was sharing some things, you know, for the men, how you know our diet plays a big part into our testosterone levels, our um, just 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 us being able to um, salute. You know, it's a lot that goes into that. And uh, I, I was listening to her today, and we. It's a lot to do to take care of our bodies, especially for a woman. Oh, my goodness. You guys have to do a lot. So, again, get your notebooks out because that's what we talked about love languages. And do you have or do you know what your love language is? And I have, uh, do, 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 where's my book? Where's my book? Uh, I have a premarital coaching workbook. It's entitled We Are Engaged Now. What the 12 commandments you need to uh, obey before you say I do. And uh, I take my uh, clients that are about to get married. We go through an 8 to 12 week uh, coaching program, a premarital coaching program. And it's to really answer some tough questions before you walk down that aisle. Many people, uh, marriage, marriages are ending in divorce at a 50% failure rate. 50%. Of the people that's getting married, fifty percent of people that have gotten married are ending up in divorce. I'm I'm one of those. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I am not. No, I am not. Oh. <laughs> Is that a compliment? <laughs> no, no, I'm far from that. I'm far from that. But I appreciate that. Um. But 
love takes work. Relationships take work. Do you have any questions tonight? Are we getting ready to have um, Intimacy Bay on? I know she's really busy. And let me see if she's here. If she's not here yet. Um, she'll be on in just a little while. But tonight we're talking about the power of intimacy. And last week, we talked about so many things last week. I was I took notes last week. Hold on. I took notes last week. And uh, what is your love language? There are five love languages. Now, hold on. There are five love languages. Okay. Yeah, five love languages. Uh, words of affirmation. Physical touch. Quality time. Gifts. And acts of service. <laughs> and you can go to uh, the five... Uh, five love languages dot com and you just can type it in. There's a test you can take to know what your your love language is. My love language, one of my love languages, is uh, words of affirmation. Talk nice to me. Talk sweet to me. Say, "Oh, you the man. I appreciate you. I love you. Oh, yay! I love that." Uh, and she she made a good point about time. That that's right, Ashley. She talked about time. A lot of people, a lot of people, their love language is time quality time and there's there's a difference there's definitely a difference between quantity and quality you know we could spend 24 hours together but that does not mean those 24 hours were quality time and inside quality time you need to be present okay you need to be present and we talked about this last week and so many um and and, and i'm guilty as well we need to be present when we're together. Be here now. That's um, I learned that in a leadership training a long time ago in corporate America. Be here now. Be present. You know, put your phone down. I, I make it a point when I'm with my clients. I make it a point when uh, I'm at lunch. I turn my phone down. Here she is, y'all. Miss Sharita is in the building. And we're here tonight for intimacy, the power of intimacy part two. Oh, my God. I hope you got your notebooks. I hope you have your notebooks. And again, if you know someone that's about to get married or you may be about to, you know, embark upon uh, the the marital bliss journey, uh, you're planning your wedding. I would not plan a wedding. I would not plan a wedding without incorporating some premarital coaching, because one thing I love about premarital coaching is that. It's going to help you pause amidst all of the planning. It's going to help you pause and ask yourself some tough questions. You're going to deliberately have to ask yourself, okay, communication. That's one of the commandments that you have to answer is communication. How do you talk to each other? And tomorrow night on the Blue Table Talk for Men, the guys, we're going to sit around and talk about how do you talk to a man? If you want the right response, you have to know how to talk to the man and parenthetically the woman as well. But we're talking to the fellas tomorrow night. The fellas talking tomorrow night. How do we want to be talked to? And so Sharita is on her way into the building. We get her all mic'd up. We got in the green room. We get her all mic'd up uh, to come on tonight. We're talking about the power of intimacy. And this is part two. Last week, again, we talked about the five love languages last week. Words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, gifts. And acts of service. And so you can go put in the search engine uh, the five love languages quiz. You can take the quiz and it'll itemize each of these categories. And you can see what your love language is. And it's amazing. If you don't know your love language, you don't know your partner's love language, y'all, that that's a disconnect in and of itself. Let's say your <laughs> let's say your love language is physical touch and quality time, and his is acts of service, and you trying to love him with your love language, and he's trying to love you with his love language. So he's always cutting the grass, he's always cleaning up around the house, he's always fixing things, he's always uh, bringing dinner home, he's always bringing you a gift, and and you are just still frustrated, and he's blowing, he's scratching his head, his mind is blown. Because why can't she see or appreciate what I'm doing? I do love her. And she wonders, does he love me? And y'all, that's a disconnect in and of itself. One of the tools I give my relationship clients, especially my married couples, you should have a moment in your week 
And, and <laughs> right, Opal? Right? Hey, proud mama. Hey, proud mama. Um, I said, you should have a, a time in the week where I call it the no judgment zone. You should have inside your week that you two sit down and have a discussion in the no judgment zone. And that can be while you're doing pillow talk or you're at dinner or you're just sitting around about to Netflix something. Let's let's have our conversation. You can talk 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour. Let's hear it here with no judgment and let's be honest with each other. Um, I was we were doing a pilot for a reality show several years ago and we were pitching some ideas around and so since I'm a life coach, I, they pitched a, a segment where this couple came in and had a conversation with me. And so we, we, we played this thing up. And so the young man, I said, well, the young man came to me and he was on. He said, I still like going to the strip club. So instead of sneaking and doing it, I said, well, why don't you guys, we're going to have a no judgment zone. And he was an entertainer. So one of the things he did before he got married part of the entertainment they would go to strip club every friday night after their gigs and stuff they just go to strip club and the strippers then they knew strippers and everything and so i said instead of trying to sneak around and do it broach the subject with your wife and just be honest and let her know where you're coming from and i told her i said and let him be honest with you if that's something that he still likes to do you guys at least need to talk about it. if y'all did not talk about it before you got married it can be really it can be a, a showstopper inside the marriage it, it, it blows my mind that people don't want to talk about stuff before they get married they're afraid that if i bring this up that just may blow up the whole relationship well do you want it to blow up before or during your marriage when do you want it to blow up and we should not be afraid to be honest with our partner a a a, a, a man likes uh, well who am i by the way i'm dr sims I host the Dr. Sims Daily Show. I host the Blue Table Talk for Men on Wednesday nights. I'm a, I'm a life coach. I'm a pastor. I'm a professional speaker. I'm an author. I've written six books, one of which is uh, We Are Engaged Now What? The 12 Commandments I Need to Obey Before I Say I Do. And welcome, everybody. Hey, Marie Dante. If I mispronounce your name, charge it to my head, my eyes, but not my heart. All right? And y'all hit that screen. If you're not tapping, you must be napping or taking notes. <laughs> okay i just invited sharita in we're talking about the power of intimacy part two and we're kind of re-going uh rehearsing what we talked about last week the five love languages and we talked about several things last week and men especially need to understand that intimacy goes far beyond the bedroom you know our end game and end goal is the bedroom or wherever we find ourselves <laughs> you know that's the end game in game, uh, flesh on flesh on flesh, like racks on racks on racks, flesh on flesh on flesh. Okay, what's up, Lily Candles? So we we want to and and and, and hers as well, and and we want to be intimate, have our sexy time. But it's so much that goes into that because if you're not clicking outside the bedroom, it's hard to click inside the bedroom. Y'all put that in your notes. If you're not clicking outside the bedroom, it's hard to click inside the bedroom. And what blows my mind, and I watch a lot of stuff on TikTok, and I, I've, I've, I've coached a lot of singles and a lot of couples. And what I found, and y'all can bag me up and do some fact checking, what blows my mind is that before we get married, there's no issue with intimacy. We, we, we love it, dovey. We holding hands. The fights are minimal. The the collateral damage is minimal. We we barely pass gas around each other before we get married. But once we get married, it's like a switch flips. We don't care as much. We try to hold some things hostage, and we're not as as spontaneous as we once were. I don't understand that, but. Even after after you get married, that's a new relationship now. As much energy as you had pre, you should have more of that energy now that you're married. Shoot, it's shoot, it's it's game on when you get married. We should find joy in being with each other once you get married. Okay? 
And so I want you to take notes tonight. You should know. I mean, this is this is critical. This is critical. If you don't know your love language, you need to know what your love language is, and then you need to know what your partner's love language is. Okay? Any questions tonight? Again, hey Shamika. Good evening again, everybody. If I have not spoken to you directly, please forgive me. That the the names go by really fast. So if I don't call your name out, please charge it to my head and not my heart. All right, and my eyesight. All right. Welcome. What's up, C Jab? Uh, if you have user as your as your TikTok handle, put your name. And if you don't want to put a picture, put a picture of your favorite football team. Put a picture of your favorite college team. Put a picture of your favorite basketball team. Put a picture of your favorite uh, football player or your basketball player or your favorite cartoon character. Put something besides the generic picture because we would like to see your face. Because, guys, what you see is what you get. <laughs> we, can't, we can't do much with us. We can't do much. We make them put on a little lip, uh, a lip balm. But other than that, uh, we can't do much. So with the guys, what you see is what you get. Make sure you tap that screen. If you're not tapping, you're napping or taking notes. Make sure you share this with your followers and let them know we're talking about the power of intimacy tonight. All right? I host the Dr. Sam's Daily Show tomorrow night. I'll be on with Rory and Phil and Goldie. Have a talk to a man tomorrow night. It's going to be good tomorrow night. If you miss it, don't miss tomorrow night. Ladies, you just on the, on the bench uh, at the Blue Table Talk for Men. All right. What questions do you have for me tonight? Again, if you're about to get married or know somebody that's about to get married, I uh, would love for you to order We Are Engaged Now with the 12 Commandments you need to say before I do. And the very first commandment you have to uh, uh, obey is thou shalt know why you're getting married. Many people get married for so many different reasons. Women get married. Uh, women get married for security. As men get older, they get married for their legacy. They want to have children. You know? Uh, and you're seeing a lot of older men now get married with younger women. Younger women get married with older men. Uh, I married Jade and Rufus two years ago. To be two years September, uh, they got married two years ago in uh, Georgetown, Texas. Um, he's seventy and she's forty, and they have hope. They're having the time of their life. They are having a ball, and so age is a number. And when we when we get through all of the playing. And I shared this with a young man Sunday, 35 years old. I said, all your plan is over. You've had all the women you want. You've had all the wine you want. And you've had all the weeds you want. It's time to get serious because I said, what do you need help with? He said, Dr. Sam, I'm having trouble focusing. I said, it's time for you to get serious because you're 35 now. You've had all, you've had fun. And, and not to say fun is over. You've had fun. So now it's time to, to focus, time to hone in with what you've been called to do. All right. You've had you've had you got t shirt, you got cigars, you got coffee cup, you got tattoos. All right. You've been there, you've done that. Okay? So it's now it's time and the Lord has allowed you. You've lived thirty five years hard. So it's now now it's time to get serious about your business. Okay? Thank you for those uh hearts, guys, and thank you for sharing this with your partner. Let's get those likes up. What are your relationships questions tonight? What are your relationship questions tonight? We're talking about intimacy tonight. Now, tonight, ladies, you're welcome to chime in tonight. Anybody that wants to talk tonight, you're welcome to come in tonight. You're welcome to talk with me tonight. This is your time tonight. All right? I'm host of the Dr. Sam Daily Show. And uh, I help people figure out life. Because a lot of people say, well, what do you do, Dr. Sam? I help people figure life out. Really? Well, I'm 56. And <laughs> I've seen it. I've done it. I've even thought about it. <laughs> All right? And so, you know, it's not too much you can say that's going to shock me. Not too much, okay? And I'm here to help you. If you're feeling unfit, because a lot of times people say, well, I'm stuck. Another way to look at being stuck is that you're unfulfilling, you're unhappy. What is the, what is the limit a wife and husband can do for each other? That, listen, is Madaya, there's no limit. Unconditional love. Because y'all should be best friends. Y'all should be lovers. Y'all should be confidants. There's no limit. Because you ought to wake up every day. Now, this might blow you away. 
You should wake up every day. And how may I serve you today? Who? What is the secret sauce at Chick-fil-A? I, I heard uh, Plies talk about this on his TikTok the other day. What's the secret sauce? What's the secret sauce to Chick-fil-A? Chicken is chicken. Their chicken is just okay. I, I like Kentucky Fried. I like Popeye's. But we find ourselves at Chick-fil-A and then get mad on Sunday when we after church, you go by there and they're closed. Get mad. But what's the secret sauce to Chick-fil-A? When you pull up to that window or when you pull up to that cash register, the first thing out of that host or hostess mouth is, how may I serve you today? You roll over with your partner, your wife, your significant other, and is Madaya, is Madaya, you say, how may I serve you today? And put a kiss on that cheek. Blow, mind blowing. Mind blowing. Do you feel me? Mind blowing. How may I serve you? See, we don't like that kind of talk. Because, see, it's, it's a trust factor. You, you should trust the person that you're in love with. And if you trust them, you know when you ask that question, their love, your love and trust bounds the answer. Oh, come on, somebody. Do you feel me? Do you feel me? How may I serve you today? Well, if, yeah, yeah. If, 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 come on, intimacy. If, if, if you don't mind, I need, I need a cup of coffee. You know how I like my coffee. How may I serve you today? Well, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm running late. Can you run and fill the car up for me? Done. Gas station, three minutes down, three minutes there. Fill up five minutes, three minutes back. I can be there 12 minutes done. Come on, intimacy. See, we, 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 we actually say this going into relationships. I'm only going to love you 40% work. I did a wedding. Come on in, intimacy. I did a wedding about eight years ago. The young man came in to, I feel like the man want to walk through. The bride comes in with her song. I'm doing the proceeding. We are actually in the service. And I say, Tasha, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? To Do you promise to honor, cherish, love, and obey him? And she said, hell no. I looked at him and said, Todd, do, do you take Tasha to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise to love, cherish, honor, and obey her? He said, hell no. I should have stopped the wedding right then. But then the Holy Spirit quickened my spirit, and I simply said, well, at least y'all on one accord. The whole church bust out laughing, and they kind of chuckled themselves, and they subsequently divorced, and she's with another young man now. Let me get uh, intimacy in here right now. Come on in, intimacy, okay? So that's why pre coaching is so important. We have on the same page, okay? Intimacy Bay, Sharita, how you doing, young lady? I am wonderful. Oh my goodness. I had some major connection issues. My apologies. Um I had Yo, you I, fine. Literally, I drove two miles down the road so I could get a signal so I could come on here and talk to you. <laughs> hey, that's some dedication, ain't it? I was like, oh no, I, I gotta I gotta get there. So no, my signal if we had a storm and it knocked the signal out in my neighborhood apparently. And I was like, Oh no, no, no. So yes, I made it I made it down. You know, here I am in my that's car, good. but it's all right. We gonna keep it's all right. In my <laughs> all right. Well, introduce yourself to everybody again tonight. Who is Intimacy Bay? Who is Sharita? I am Sharita Reed. I am an intimacy coach, um, sexual health and wellness educator, and relationship enhancement specialist. So um, I do all things as far as um, helping people to really, really enhance intimacy um, in their relationships. Um, I do advise people on sexual health and wellness. Really help them kind of navigate, figure out, you know, what's going on with their body. And I provide them with, you know, an array of products that can help them kind of meet those needs or level up and enhance some things. But I do, I give a ton of advice um, in, in the meantime, um, which is, you know, has been really amazing here on TikTok. So, um, yeah, we're going we to continue this talk, though. Um, last time, we, we spent so much time, we talked about communication and love language and everything. And that was so amazing. Um, you, got, you got your notes. <laughs> 
That was so amazing. And I love all the feedback. All the feedback everybody was giving. That, that was great. That lets me know, hey, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job. <laughs> I'm doing my job. <laughs> that is so that is so good, Sheree. So so do you have I mean, is this your nine to five? Are you an intimacy coach nine to five? Are you working? Is this your field? Or are you do you have, still have a corporate job? How are you integrating you being the intimacy coach and how you're doing your day to day? This this is one of my full time jobs. My other full I say I have two full time jobs. The other one is also work from home. I don't have corporate jobs, anything like that. Um, I work for myself um, on two separate businesses. I'm also a custom cake decorator. If anybody in Houston is looking for a cake, <laughs> so I yes, I work for myself. But this is pre this is pretty much what I do. Um, all day long, I do consultations. I do, of course, for ladies, I'll show up and do parties and, you know, they like to talk to me and see all the products, things like that. But yes, this is, this is it. Um, I am totally like engulfed and, and invested in, um, in sexual health and wellness, uh, helping couples build up, you know, their relationships and things like that, it, especially, you know, in the area of, you know, behind closed doors, but we definitely touch on communication and things before you hit the door. And so, um, yeah, it's this, this is, this is my life. <laughs> this is what Amen. I so let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. OK, to talk about intimacy part two tonight. What are things men wish women knew and give us three? And what are three things women wish men knew? Give us three. Ooh, OK, OK, OK. Um, let me see. I'm taking notes. Um, let me see. Three things men wish that women knew. Um, yeah, and then talk to us about women, what do women wish men knew. Okay, gotcha. I think women need to understand that men are not. Um, mm. We don't. We don't require the same things. Men, y'all value um, respect over gentleness. Women are the opposite, but y'all about there's a certain level of appreciation and respect that y'all y'all need that. Y'all need that in order to feel built up, in order to feel honored, um, being honored and all those things. You know, we, we like all the emotional stuff. We like to be touched and all that. Uh-uh. Y'all don't, that's, that's, that's all. So making him feel respected, honored, and appreciated, ladies. Oh, my gosh. It makes a world of a difference for that man's day. We, uh, I know, Dr. Rodden, we were joking earlier about what that, how difficult it is to be a man, you know. And we did, we deal with, two, you know, two different um, you know, of, of course, of, of course, I just, it's, it's on a deeper level with men where they don't always That's require right. all of the, all of the mushy stuff that we like, we, you know, we, we like it all. We want the respect. We want the love. We want the, we want the kindness. We want, we want everything. And for men are much more simple than us. They're not as complex a, as we are. Um, if they feel respected, um, Oh my, sometimes that just like sets sets the whole tone and it opens the floodgates for them. Um, number two, um, men men need to feel safe um, as far as being vulnerable. Men do not really get that. Um, some, some of those upbringing they've been taught that keep those emotions to yourself, suck it up, put some dirt on it, keep going. You're fine. Men really, really need to know that you are in their corner and that they can vent and tell you things and that their emotions and their words and everything are safe. And that is what really, really gives them security in you. So being his safe space, I know we talk about be his peace, be his safe space, be his safe space, ladies. Um, let him know that him being emotional and expressing his, you know, frustration, cares of the day is totally okay. Men like to That's right. I think, see, I think moving forward sometimes can be a learned behavior. Um, and it can, we, it, we can kind of rush through things and not really like sit in those moments. And I think that that just kind of gives y'all like a, a build up. So then you're like, boom, there's, there's a pop off or y'all end up with more heart related issues and like, you know, all those types of things because that release, it's, it's just not a thing that has been like promoted and taught that, oh, it's okay. You know, men can, they can be emotional and all that. So, being being that security for him to do that with you and be vulnerable is it may be weird to him. He like, uh, what's going on here? But it is very, right. very, very much needed. So men don't like to pass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Men like to just like, okay, we we done with that. Um That's so right. and then okay, I'll get oh, to piggyback off that. Men are fixers. Men are fixers. Um 
we like the women, we, we like to like stand the man and saying, women, we like to really talk about, we want to talk about all the details. And then at one time, because, and that's why today I feel like such and such, and that's why I'm going to need you to, and they like, okay, what, 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 how can I fix it? And we feel like they are dismissing our feelings. Men are fixers. They want to get to, what is the problem? What do you need me to do? Where is it? Let's do it. Let me fix it. Who do I need to go hit? Who do I need to hit for you? Right. <laughs> right. They don't, they're, they may listen to all the talking and things like that because they want to respect what you're saying. Men are absolute fixers. So if you feel like he's rushing past your emotions and what you're saying, that's that's just that's just their nature. If their the intent is not to be dismissive, but they want to fix it for you. If they really care about you. Men go right there, very straightforward. Okay, and okay, what is it? Where is it? What yeah, we it? have zero right. ulterior motives. We have no <laughs> underlying motives. We yeah. have zero ulterior motives. We don't beat around the bush. We'll cut the bush down. Nope. <laughs> They're like bush. Okay, out of the way, bush. Okay, now we're moving forward. So absolutely, absolutely. So. Those are real. Those are three good things I think that women tend to misinterpret about about men. Um, so, so give us what do women need us to know? What do women? What are the three things women wish men knew that I okay. think we know, so, but reiterate the, for us? On the on the flip side, well, I'll give you one. Like I mentioned with guys, they y'all value y'all more simple. With women, we're so complex, but gentleness, gentleness is such a big thing for us. It's such a, a, a guys. If you ever had her say, well, well, I mean, like if you're trying to be intimate, right? And you say, let's go. She's like, why you have to say it like that? You couldn't. You, I yeah, you just went straight for it. You couldn't say that. No, 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 different than that. We like the. We like all. Put a bow on it. We like you to really, really do that thing up when you, when you, when you're being verbal with us. We like all the caressing and we love all of that. So. So, like Sharita, Sharita, can I interject? So, so yeah. when I say, well, I've told a group here on TikTok, and I've told some of my clients, and I've told some of the ladies, and they give me thumbs up. We have to talk to y'all like you're our daughter. How yeah. soft, the gentleness, how yeah. the kind of talk. Because a lot, a lot of women, and help me with this, a lot of women are jealous of their daughters because dad goes to a whole nother place with his daughter. His voice does do, does a thing that your wife wishes you would do with her. You're very y'all can be y'all can be re real rough, and then it's like you're different. It's like wait a minute, I would like the softness as well. I'm I'm a female just like she's a female. She's my offspring, but that 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 different place where you 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 hold her like she's covered in bandages. I would that that I need that too. And so that is so important. That is so important for us to be handled very gently. So how you, there's a verbal, there's physical caressing, but there's a gentle verbal approach that makes women, yes, that, that's what I'm talking about. We, we love that, oh my goodness, just treat us like, you know, in, in your words. Be, be very intentional um, with how, how soft your, your words are because, oh my God, that, that does a thing. It doesn't seem so. Oh my, that is very, very, very important. Very important. Um, let me see. Let me, let me two more. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm sure there's far more for us. I can't even oh, remember. hello. Come on. So we got gentleness. Come on. Um, mm, let me see. Let me see. Um, women. Oh, I, sh I share this a lot. Women are like ovens. Um, Y'all be trying to roast things when we're talking about intimacy. Women are like ovens. Y'all are like microwaves. Y'all not oh. an air fryer. Y'all not an air Absolutely fryer, right? Not. Absolutely not. Okay. You have to really, really be be, <laughs> be intentional and take your time. Take your time. Don't feel like you got to jump in there and, okay, come on, let's, let's get to the getting. She's just like, oh, you know what? Ne no, never mind. Um, so we, our bodies, Chem I mean, just each, for real, chemically, our bodies take much more time to get in position um, and get, you know, um, prepared for the act of, of intimacy than your bodies do. So it may, y'all may be ready, five minutes. See, see, see I got to go to work. So, but let's say you got some time, the time you're at home. Um, it takes us 
It just our body it just do. It's not something that we can control. It's not right. that we're trying to dominate the bedroom. It's not that we want you just do just do what I want you to do. It's that our bodies literally, physically and wow. chemically take a much longer time for hormones and nerves and things like that and blood flow to get to a point where our bodies are totally ready to But once y'all are there, once you there. What? Yes, once we there. She hopes they take time to add a little extra seasoning. <laughs> Y'all like a crock pot. Y'all like a crock pot. Yeah, yeah. And, and and listen, and when you put that food in the crock pot and it's finally done, it's the best thing you ever had. It is amazing. It's it's so worth it, correct? When when you put that time That's in, good. you get it. That's good. It That's good. It's worth it. It's worth it. Um and let me see. Let me let me let me see a third. Um, a third thing, we, we kind of talked about verbal and communication. We talked about the physical. Uh, and I would say, I would say a number three with y'all, Sharita, would be you like it when we take charge. We do. They're okay. Okay. Women, I, I put it like this women value security. There's a certain level of security that we do need and crave. And that comes when we know he got it, he can handle it. I don't have to. I don't have to jump in and and do this and handle it and tell. Babe, did yada yada yada. When you be like, I, I got it, I got it. And that could be where are we going for food. dinner? Where are we going after dinner? Mm -hmm. What movie we gonna watch? What we gonna do after Absolutely. the movie? Let's lay that thing out. If y'all say, if you say, babe, I need you to be dressed by seven. Um, we going somewhere. Um, um, where where that where that really really nice uh red dress that that I like. Put that on. That red okay, lipstick, and, uh, the red lipstick. Yeah, and go ahead and, and, and do your hair up. Uh, be ready by seven, you know, and I'll, I'll see you at the house. Oh, she going to be like, I don't know what's going on. I know where we going, but let me get ready. Let me get ready. Say, hey, hey. <laughs> like, oh, we absolutely love when y'all take charge. There's a certain security in knowing not only are you taking charge, but you know me well enough to know that whatever you're you're doing is something that is pleasing to me or I'm going to enjoy. So we know uh, security means you 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 know you know what I need, you understand me and you got me. I don't have to constantly tell you over and over and over again and make decisions all the time. There's a certain security and a rest that we get in the fact that we know y'all can take charge and 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 lead and you're not going to lead me off a cliff. You're going to lead me to the promised land. I can I can sit back like this. Hey, you can take it. Hey, you can sit back. You can sit back. You can sit back. Hey, good good evening again, guys. I am here with the uh, New York Times bestseller, uh, Intimacy Bay, Miss Sharita. She is phenomenal. No, I don't. Where has TikTok been all my life? She is <laughs> awesome, and I hope y'all are taking note. Let's recap real quick. Men would love women to know that we we love respect. We love having a safe place. And women need to know that we're fixers. We love fixing stuff. If you got a problem, we miss to fix it. Women would love it if men knew these three things. And we got a bonus item. Number one, we love women love gentleness and softness. Number two, take your time. Once you're there, take your time. Get it right. We can do it, baby. Number three, number three, again, take your time. Number three, women love it. When we take charge, okay, they don't want a dictator per se. Right. They they want some a man that knows how to take charge. Got everything laid out. Now the bonus item, which is a sub thought of number three, is listen, listen, Le 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 Leon, listen, Leon, listen, 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 listening. If I'm an active listener, that is so sexy to a woman. I heard you, baby. I got it. Daddy got it. Oh. <laughs> Come on now, Ernestine. I got you, Ernestine. Come on. <laughs> and that's, I think, uh, for for that plays into number three. If you're listening to me, and not just listening just to hear my voice, but you actually are taking in and digesting the things that 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 I say, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, and you really, really keep those things. There's that that adds to the security because I know that whatever decisions you're making when you're taking charge, they include me. You are being considerate of what my needs are, what I said right. yesterday, what the house needs that we talked about last week. I know that you were listening to me. 
months or whatever, when you take in charge, I don't have to worry about your decisions or nothing. I can sit back with my hands just like this in my lap and go, he got Oh, that, that's exactly right. As we get ready, as we get ready for intimacy part three, Sharita, uh, I message you my number. Message me your number because I want us to sit down okay. and talk about where we want to go for part three next week. So I want to mm -hmm. I want to get about thirty minutes of your time and and call sure. you and talk to you because the people people have been blowing my inbox up. <laughs> they couldn't wait to tonight. They, we on to something. I definitely have some some things I want to I want to discuss. So um, I got you. you definitely, definitely. So so definitely. let me ask you this, Sharita. Let me ask you this. So so we laid this out, and it, it, it's real straightforward. Now, my class, uh, I'm teaching some soft skill classes on Thursday, and all of my students are like, Dr. Sims, this stuff is so straightforward. I said, yes. I said, uh, theoretically, you know all of this stuff, but it's the doing mm -hmm. that's hard. So why is it so hard for us men folk and women folk and lovers, we just say lovers. Why is it so hard for us to get on the same page? And why are single people having more fun than married folks? <laughs> okay, so as far as getting on the same page, we are literally, um, medically, we are wired very differently. Men and women brains are wired very differently. And so y'all operate a certain way and our brains operate a certain way naturally. So you're going against the grain trying to do something that you're literally not designed to do. Men, your brains are like a a one way, one way highway, okay, with stop signs along the way. Okay. It's big, right. it can take your information, but it's like group, okay, what's next? Give me next task. Group, let me stop right here and let me do what we said. Okay, do that. Y'all go like this. Women's brains is like a super highway, and it's like this. Everything is fused in. And there have been studies that they've talked about our, the, the, the nervous system in relation to a man versus a woman. And our brains are like this. That's why we can multitask. Like we can do all kinds of things. Yeah, y'all yeah, like, like 285 around Atlanta. Y'all like 285 Correct. around Atlanta. Correct. So we can we doing all kinds of stuff and we cooking over here and such, 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 such. And you heard me, right? And we're doing a million things. Y'all like, okay, wait, stop. Um, wait, what, what? Give me one at a time. <laughs> Give me one at a time. And so we are literally going against the grain of how our bodies are even wired to try to operate like each other, or just be mindful of the things that the other person needs because it's the, it, it's it's just not in your in your makeup. It's just not in your makeup. But it is very important to be considerate of those, you know, just of those different things. And we just got to be intentional. A lot of it, when you say it's in the doing, it's about being intentional and saying, I know. This this don't make no sense to me, but this is important to her. Or I don't know why he wants this, but this is important to him. This, this this means something. We have to get into the mindset of valuing our partner enough to say, I have to be intentional. Okay. I have to show them that I value them. And even though this is weird and I don't get it and I don't understand, I right. have to put this on my schedule. And I got to make this happen at some point in time, little, you know, here and there and do these things because I know it's going to bless my partner. Not because I want it, not because I get it or understand it. But when we value them enough to say, I, I want to see pleasure on your face and I, and I want right. to bless my person, it changes the game. So we have to. It, it changes, it doesn't it? We have, yes, we have to look at it so differently because. We tend to think that we, okay, so let me pick, let me segue that to your question. Why are married people seem to have more problems than single people got it together, okay? When right. people get married, they tend to think that I got married for the sole purpose of being happy. And I'm like, no, that is not, <laughs> it's not, and, and it sounds really harsh, okay? But you're going right. to incur so many, so many pitfalls because think about this. Marriage was designed by God. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get spiritual on y'all real quick. Come Marriage on, come on, we with you. Okay. So if the enemy wants to destroy things that God has created, that means you and everything that you do and everything you love. He can't get to him, but he can try to get to him through you by hurting hurting. Come on, Sharita. So, come on, Sharita. Marriage. God designed marriage and you try to honor God and you and you and you get married. You you think he's not coming for you? He's coming for your marriage. He's coming for your marriage because it's something that God created, something that God created. He wants to destroy all the good things, all the good things God created that are supposed to be fruitful and supposed to bless us. That's why. That's why you go through hell 
once you get married, you're like, what happened? What changed? How come? You're like, what's up? We were good. We, we've been together six, seven years, and we get married, and now we at each other's throats. The enemy is sitting there watching, like, I'm not going to mess with them because they 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 not together. They, you know, let's say y'all y'all cohabitating. He like, listen, they, they ain't supposed to be doing that, so they already out of his will. I'm going to leave them alone. They, they messing up already. Oh, they got right. married. They got married. Oh, I got, oh, no, no, no. Okay, so now you're inside of his will. He want to push you back out. So he finna wreak hell as much as he can. And that's why it's important. We got to keep that in our minds and not come that the Bible say, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but principality. Okay. That's good. It's not your enemy. You got to look at the fact that the enemy is trying to whisper in your partner's ear every single day once you get married. And they try oh, to that's create. Good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And they cry, he trying to turn you two against each other and say, he did that because he don't care about me. He forgot to pick this up because he don't listen. He don't, he don't care about me. And he and guys, y'all saying, see, I asked her to do this. She, she, she doesn't respect me. She doesn't respect me. I'm going to party every day. And this woman didn't even do such. And I just I just wanted to eat and yada. When there are so many intricacies and why things happen every day. But the enemy will whisper because he knows he is waiting on you to listen. So he can That's destroy good. the marriage. So you can be back outside of the wheel. That's yeah. It. That, and that's that why is so good. Uh, Sharita, uh, part three next week. See, this was good tonight. We dropped so many nuggets tonight. How can people, what's your, what's your online, what's your live schedule? When are you on so everybody can know when to watch uh, Intimacy Bay? I'm, I'm on live between, um, between about 12 and 2. I pop on in the afternoons. Um, I pop on again between about 7 and 9. Us, this Central Standard Time, and then I do a late night, okay, about 11.40, 11.45, I'll pop on, I'll be on for a couple more hours, so um, I try to, you know, get 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 everybody in there. The late night chat is actually the midday chat, the afternoon lunch chat has become very, 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 very good, but the late night chat is is, is where it's at. Um, we talk about all <laughs> things. All things. Yes, Hope said I love the late night. See, oh, yeah, Hope, Hope has been on, she's been on. That's when I get a little more relaxed. I'm not in a blazer. I'm on the couch and with a blanket. Yeah, you're on the couch sitting on some Kool-Aid. Right. You see me with my Kool-Aid <laughs> Yeah, sipping on that Kool-Aid. Uh-huh. I'm <laughs> up, yeah. so that's, I try to come on at least twice a day, but those are, um, you are welcome, Miss Ernestine. Um, you are, um, but yes, those are kind of my times. I try to do the afternoon. Um, an evening when people are off work, that's and, good. you know, they gotta go that's to the good. Evening. So I'll do a late night from, from my night hour. So that's mm -hmm. good. But listen, that's been Sharita part three next week. We going deep every week. These are layers. So we talked about the love yep. language. We talked oh, about what we accept, what we want from each other. We talked about that next yeah. week. Level three next week is going to be even more serious. So Sharita, yeah. thank you tonight. Okay. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you for having me again. That was Intimacy Bay, y'all. We love y'all so much. We thank y'all for being here tonight. I hope y'all took note. Let me address Phoenix real quickly. Let me address Phoenix real quickly. Phoenix, you got to sit down and have a conversation with your husband, okay? And some boundaries need to be set. Some boundaries need to be set, okay? Boundaries need to be set, okay? Boundaries need to be set, okay? Some boundaries need to be set, all right? You need to set some boundaries. You need to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Mr. Phoenix, okay? Nothing emotional. Just share your concerns, okay? I do some role-playing. I do some role-playing with my clients. And so ask him, what if the shoe was on the other foot? What if you had an ex and you would talk to your ex and you're nice to your ex and, 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 and y'all were making going to lunch together once a week? He would have a baby. We know that ain't happening, all right? And so... Just just remember, you love him, okay? He loves you. Y'all been together a while. And say, what's going on? And if you would like, I do I do couples uh, coaching. I do marital coaching. So uh, my bio is in my is in is in my uh, my link, my information is in my bio. Okay? And so just relax. Everything's gonna be okay. You you y'all were crazy about each other one time. Well, well, just see what's going on. See what's going on. Where are we? What are we doing? What are we doing? Okay? And reach out to me. Shoot me an email, Dr. Sam at drwalsam.com. Shoot me an email. I, I help people with this. Okay? See what's going on. Have a conversation. 
You have said, how have you said things? Because he's not hearing you. He's not listening. How did y'all get here? What did Deborah Cox say? How did we get here? What's going on? Do an assessment of your relationship. Did y'all go through marital, premarital coaching? Okay. Did y'all go through premarital coaching? Did you did you sit down and see if y'all were compatible? How did y'all how did y'all get hooked up? Okay, it's not the end of it's not the end of the road. Come here, uh, boys and men. It's not the end of the road. Okay, sit down and let's hey, how, let's have a conversation. Take him to dinner. Now, let me take you to lunch. Let me take you to dinner. Let's go to your favorite place. Okay, don't do it during the football game. His favorite team. Do it. Do it when you guys have a date night. When you have date day. Okay. All right. Now his ex is an ex for a reason. All right. So let's 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 do some tangible things before we throw the baby in the bathwater out the back door. Let's let's come up a hundred feet. And let's let's assess some things. Let's assess some things, right? Okay. And this has been a good show tonight, y'all. Hey, listen, I like to have a very nuclear show in the sense that I hit hard and give you a lot to chew on and think about in 50 minutes to an hour. We have a lot to chew on. Y'all got a lot of notes tonight. So how do I respect? How do I listen better? How do I assess things? How do I how do I really make my relationship pop how do i show up make the bedroom pop the the sexy time how can i make that pop you got to be intimate before you get to the bedroom how are you in the boardroom you got to get along to get along to get along hey man hey this has been dr sam host of the dr sam show have we had a good time tonight y'all I hope I answered everybody's question tonight. If you got a question that I did not answer, shoot me an email. Thank you, Phoenix. Shoot me an email, Dr. Sam, the Dr. Wanda Sam .com. Shoot me an email if I did not answer your question tonight. All right? If I did not answer your question tonight, shoot me an email, Dr. Sam, the Dr. Wanda Sam .com, and we will answer your question. All right? I hope I answered everybody's question. Sharita, thank you for being here tonight. Hey, the intimacy part two. We're going to go for part three next week. I'm so excited. All right? All right? What's up, Katrina? What's up, Katrina? How you doing? Do you have a question tonight? How you doing, Katrina? Katrina, how you doing tonight? Do you have any more questions? Right on, I don't think I'm going to find. Well, Opal, you have to be hopeful. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Okay, let me give you this. This, I mean, I'm, I'm coaching. I coach on demand. Let me give you this right now. Uh, Opal, um... Are you really ready for a relationship? Answer the question, why do you want to be in a relationship? Answer that question. What are your negotiables and non-negotiables? Let's, let's get some tangible pieces of paper. Number one, why are you ready for a relationship right now? Let's come up even higher than that. Look at all your relationships. Write the goods and the bads and why you're no longer together and were you in love. Number one, do that assessment first. Secondly, why are you ready for a relationship now? Have you done any type? Have you had a relationship coach? Have you really done some work on you? Do you love you? Okay, so are you ready? Are you really ready? Okay, let's, let's, let's start at the top. Let's start at the top. Okay, let's start at the top. Let's do a relationship assessment. The goods, the bads, why we broke up, and was I in love? Let's do that assessment. Let's get that sheet of paper. The second sheet of paper is... Why am I ready for a relationship right now? What kind of work have I done on me based on the first sheet of paper and the, the reasons we broke up and was I in love and the damage of all of that? Have I healed from that? Have I gotten some professional help to help me deal with that cluster? Okay, perfect. Okay, so I got to settle. Number three, what are my negotiables and non-negotiables? Let me get that document. What are my negotiables and non-negotiables? Let me get that piece of paper. And number four, what kind of man, what kind of partner am I looking for? So I got four pieces of paper now. So when an individual comes into my presence, I got this, I got this piece of paper. I got this, these documents. And I, hey, Phil, I can put these documents up against this partner and see how they pan out. Right? So let's say you want somebody to make you laugh and you got a person in front of you now that you got off plenofish.com. That's very serious all the time. That's not a good fit. 
or you got as a negotiable somebody that works out all the time. Okay, now somebody in front of you that's a couch potato. That's that that that's two opposing lifestyles. Okay, but now you got four documents that if anybody else comes, you read it. Read Ruth. Your reading material is Ruth. One, two, three, and four. Chapters one, two, three, and four. And let me share something with y'all that's gonna blow your mind. Ruth didn't pray for Boaz. In fact, she didn't even know Boaz existed. But she changed locations. She changed her mindset. And she just so happened, Boaz saw her. Even before, she didn't even see Boaz, but Boaz saw her. Read Ruth 1, 2, 3, and 4. Blow your mind. And so, so when you hear women talking about, well, drop your bozo so you can get your Boaz. That that's the wrong energy. That's the wrong. That's the wrong. That's the wrong energy. Okay, I understand. You'll be surprised. Look up. Look up Nick Vujicic. Look up Nick Vujicic. He's a Christian motivation speaker. Hold on. Let me let me let me Google it right now. Give you the right spelling. You'll be surprised. Hold on. I did this in my presentation. Okay, N I C K. His last name is Vujicic, V-U-J-I-C-I-C, V-U-J-I-C-I-C. Let me put that in. So that's going to blow your mind. That's going to blow your mind. Nick, just look him up. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to steal my own thunder. Just, Opal, that's your homework. Look him up and you will be shocked. He's married and got four children. You're going to be surprised. Okay? You're going to be surprised. Look him up. All right? Look him up. See, so so what, what you you need to, and if you don't mind me being very blunt, I'm a life coach. This is what you get when you get me as your coach. Let me be very blunt. You've been feeling sorry for yourself for a while. And I'm, a, I'm an intuitive, too. I feel people. Okay? If I can be honest. And if you're honest with Opal, you've been feeling some kind of way about Opal lately. You got to get out of that energy. Yeah, you got to get out of that energy. Okay, spell it again. Okay, N-I-C-K is Nick. B-U-J-I-C-I-C. -I -I okay, I texted it to you. Uh, Nick Bujicic. V-U-J-I-C-I-C. -I -I okay, married four kids. Check him out. You're going to be blown away. But you got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. That's right. Thank you, Hope. And as a matter of fact, Hope, I'm going to make you a moderator for my show to help me field questions and stuff. I'm going to make you a moderator. Let me see. Yeah, I'm going to make you a moderator, Hope. Uh, I'll do it later. But you're going to be a moderator for the show. Uh, but no pity parties. And, and that's why you and I may need to do some work one-on-one. -on -one, but tell those Peter Party tickets. You're a beautiful person. And when you look at Nick and where he has been and where he is and what he's doing with his life and how happy his family is, he's got four children and a beautiful wife. I talked about this in class last week. Okay? Okay? All right? Yes, there's somebody. There's somebody. You will be surprised. Yeah, read Ruth chapters 1 through 4. Blow your mind. She said, your people will be my people. You're going to be my God. Wherever you go, I'll go. Yeah, you need to value. I have a book, uh, I Declare Love. Um, just make sure you, Let me make sure I follow you. I think I followed you last week. Yeah, I follow. let me make sure I'm following you. I'll follow you. Uh, make sure you follow me back. I need your address so I can send you my book, okay? And this has been great today. And this show, I came on tonight just for you. And all of us, everybody in here tonight, I want you to hear me and hear me well. You need to love you. Point to yourself right now. And we did this in class Thursday. I love me some me, Terrell Owens. I love me some me. I love me some me. You got to love you tonight. If you don't love you, if you don't love you, it is criminal to expect somebody else to love you. OK. I hope you enjoyed tonight. We've had a great conversation tonight. This is the Dr. Sam Day show. And tomorrow night, Phil, me and Phil will be in the show tomorrow night. 
the show is, oh, you're supposed to be the man. Hey, Amen. Boom. Me and Phil, uh, you're supposed to be the man, right? Oh, we're going to unpack that tomorrow night. We're going to unpack that tomorrow night. How to talk to a man last week, but how to talk to a man and um, you're supposed to be the man. We're going to unpack that social construct. You supposed, What does that even mean? You're supposed to be the man. Well, when I am the man, okay, okay. Okay, tomorrow night. Come tomorrow night. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed tonight. I love the Dr. Sims Daily Show, and I upload this to my YouTube channel. If you have not done so, go to drwatersims.tv, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that bell notification so you'll know when I go live, all right? Hey, 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 I want you to know I love you tonight, all right? I want you to know I love you tonight, all right? I love, I love love. I'm a romantic. I love rom-coms, romantic comedies. Uh, let's see, what am I going to play? Hey, this is my jam right here, y'all. Everything's going to be just fine. <laughs> it makes me want to move. It makes me want to have Let me play this for Hope and Opal tonight. Let me play this for Hope and Opal tonight. Hope and Welcome Opal, to this is for you tonight. You've just accessed the beautiful experience. This experience Hope and Opal, will cover this is courtship, for you. I'm dedicating sex, this song for you tonight. Fetishes, loneliness, vindication, love, and hate. Please enjoy your experience. This is one of my favorite songs right here. Let me know if you know what this song is. Oh, you two be tripping sometimes. They don't like that. Could you be the most beautiful girl in the world? It's plain to see. It's plain to see y'all play that song and remember, as I always say, if you stay high on life, life is going to stay high on you. See y'all next week. And don't forget, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Blue Table Talk for men. I do, too, feel Love me some friends. I'll see y'all tomorrow night.